Hello, and thank you for standing by for Baidu Second Quarter 2020 Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After management's prepared remarks, there will be a question and answer session. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn the meeting over to your host for today's conference, Juan Lin, Baidu's Director of Investor Relations. Hello everyone, and welcome to Baidu's second quarter 2020 earnings conference call. Baidu's earnings report was distributed earlier today, and you can find a call on our website as well as on newswire services. On the call today, we have Robin Lee, our Chief Executive Officer, Herman Yu, our Chief Financial Officer, and Dou Shen, our Executive Vice President in charge of Baidu's mobile ecosystem group, our search and seed business. After our prepared remarks, we will hold a Q&A session. Please note that the session today will contain forward-looking statements made under the safe harbor provisions of the U.S. Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties because actually does to defer materially from our current expectations. Potential risks and uncertainties include but are not limited to those outlined in our public filings with the ICC, including our annual report on Form 20S. Baidu does not undertake any obligation to update any forward-looking statements except as required under applicable law. Our earnings press release and this call include discussions of certain unaudited non-GAAP financial measures. We have made minor adjustments to our non-GAAP measures and we will actively apply these changes for comparison purposes. Our press release contains a reconciliation of the unaudited non-GAAP measures to the unaudited most directly comparable gap measures, and is available on our IR website at ir.baidu.com. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded. In addition, a webcast of this conference call will also be available on Baidu's IR website. I will now turn the call over to our CEO, Robin. Hello, everyone. Baidu's total revenues in the second quarter reached RMB 26.0 billion, declining 1% year-over-year versus a 7% decline. Excuse me, presenter. We do not have audio from your side. Can you unmute locally, please? All right. Uh, let me repeat what I just said. Uh, Baidu's total revenues in the second quarter reached RMB 26.0 billion, uh, declining 1% over year uh, versus a 7% decline in the first quarter. Baidu Core contributed to the rebound with the second quarter revenue growing 24% sequentially. Baidu Core's online marketing services has demonstrated steady improvement since the throw in February, with encouraging recovery across many industries. The second quarter, however, was also met with temporary setbacks, such as new waves of COVID-19 cases appearing in Beijing and other areas of China where level two pandemic precautionary measures were again put in place. Fast forward to later half of July, the situation has been improving since then, as COVID-19 cases subside. This positive moves forward. Coupled with some temporary setbacks, leave us cautiously optimistic about the bin's climate into the second half. While COVID-19 uh, geographic, geopolitical tension and other phenomena plaguing the economy may continue to bring about hiccups. The opportunities that AI has presented us are getting more exciting. Our foray into in-app search three years ago is proving to redefine how content and services are consumed and allow Baidu to be a competitive force to enable long-tail SMEs to do bins online. 
more than two thirds of Baidu app users are logging in daily, which not only demonstrates user stickiness, but also indicates a greater sense of identity and belonging on Baidu of users. The CPM gap between Baidu app and union traffic continues to widen. In-app revenue makes up the majority of search and feed revenue, and daily in-app search queries outgrowing the total search market in China. Traditional search through a browser directs users away from Baidu, whereas in-app search aggregates third-party content and services onto our, our platform for a unique closed-loop experience. Users come to Baidu to form relationships with merchants through follow, messaging, live video, shop, and so on. With users remaining on Baidu after the landing page, we are in a better position to improve user insight and provide a superior user experience, such as verifying the merchants, monetize, uh, monitoring the content and services on Baidu for better quality, strengthening Baidu's vertical and community offerings, and enabling users to follow, interact, and transact with merchants. From the merchant's perspective, our customers no longer rely on Baidu only for traffic. They are able to build a fan base through our building blocks of BJH accounts, a smart mini program, and manage page, and increase interaction with their fan base through live videos, coupon giveaways, and closed-loop transactions, and leverage our marketing services platform for conversion improvement look-alike targeting, and repeat purchases. Baidu's value proposition, extending from selling traffic to also provide marketing cloud services to empower merchants' consumer relationship management capabilities, makes us more competitive by leveraging Baidu's AI and cloud capabilities. The, increase, the increasing liveliness of our users their participation in live broadcasting, e-commerce, and other activities provides Baidu an opportunity to leverage our existing traffic to move beyond marketing services into membership, online games, and other revenue streams. Our new AI businesses, Xiaodu smart devices continue to sell well despite the current economic situation causing headwinds to smartphones and other consumer electronics. Baidu Cloud is leveraging Baidu's leading AI to provide intelligent cloud solutions to enterprises to help them digitize and do more with AI computing. Apollo continues to make advances in autonomous driving and commercialization, particularly in the area of smart transportation, which stands to benefit from the new infrastructure initiative that China is pushing to reignite the economy. ITE weathered another COVID-19 impacted quarter with positive growth year over year, reinforcing the belief that online entertainment can fare well in difficult economic times. Let's begin by do second quarter review with MEG. Baidu app DAUs reached 204 million in June. MAUs were over half a billion, which puts Baidu app in an elite class of top six apps in China, ahead of Douyin, Kuaishou, Weibo, and other feed apps, according to Quest Mobile. In-app user engagement on Baidu app remained strong, with in-app search queries growing 28% year over year in the second quarter. Thanks to improving user experience and the expansion of third-party content and services on our platform. Let me talk about video, social, services, and monetization for MET. First, on video. Baidu app is becoming a powerful distributor of video content. Video consumption from search increased 81% year over year, and video make up about 70% of the feed consumed. 
For Baidu set of knowledge, <coughs> uh, set of six knowledge products such as Baidu Wiki, Baidu Knows, video contributed to almost a third of the page views, up from less than 20% at the beginning of the year. Our efforts in fortifying the content on Baidu with video is showing incredible results. For example, in the area of healthcare, PGC videos expanded rapidly, resulting in total video views surging over five folds from the prior quarter. Live streaming is becoming a popular way for professionals to share their content on Baidu. We are making live streaming easy to conduct on our building blocks, especially for non-entertainment-oriented content creators. For example, daily non-entertainment live video sessions on Baidu app surged by more than fourfold and monthly viewership grow by 80% in the last three months. Topical live sessions such as Baidu Wiki Virtual Zoo, Summer Art Festival, and Wandering Through Civilization Season 2 attracted over 40 million viewership in the second quarter. Industry experts are also live streaming on Baidu. For example, live video sessions by healthcare experts nearly tripled in the last three months, even as COVID-19 subsides in China. Second, on social. We're making it easier for users to interact with content creators and service providers on Baidu through our building blocks. The versatility of Baidu building blocks allows our users, for example, to leave comments on their search results, to interact with content creators, or with others who are interested in the same content, in essence, building topical communities. Users can follow the content creators for future informational updates. We recently integrated VGH accounts with Baidu knowledge products and interactions between users and content creators within Baidu knowledge products increased 78% in the last three months. Third, on services. In the second quarter, we added service centers in Baidu app, which allows users to access services from a wide range of merchants and government organizations through a single, uh, uh, single sign-on and keep track of their transactions with various service providers through our <coughs> My Wallet and My Message Center. Through My Service Center, Users can perform a host of third-party services, such as buying tickets for tourist destinations and train rides, uh, making reservations for restaurants and car repairs, checking express delivery status, and paying utility bills, all in Baidu app, without, leaving, <coughs> without having to download the host apps. Baidu service offerings will continue to expand as new players join our Smart Mini program network. Fourth, on monetization. Despite tough macro involvement in the first half of this year, Baidu app revenue grew both in Q1 and in Q2. Baidu app search traffic continues to see healthy growth, and the CPM gap between in-app search and browser search continues widening, validating that Baidu's in-app strategy is coming to fruition. On the CRM side, when customers buy traffic from Baidu, they can log into our Marketing Cloud platform, which is upgraded regularly with new features, tools, and technology advances to help them improve ad conversion. By enabling our mar marketing service customers to perform consumer relationship management we are transforming search from directing traffic to enabling customers to engage and improve the lifetime value of the consumers they acquire on Baidu. Let me talk about how our building blocks is making verticals and communities more compelling. The healthcare and wellness industry makes up almost a tenth of China's GDP. Baidu's health, <coughs> Baidu Health 
is fortunate to be a top healthcare and wellness platform in China, and our strong brand has gained further recognition amid the spread of COVID-19 into a pandemic. Year to date, top tier doctors joining Baidu Health has increased 87%, and our partnership covers the majority of the top hospitals in China. The aggregation of quality healthcare content on Baidu, from healthcare expert news feeds to short video to live broadcasting, has increased our healthcare traffic and resulted in online doctor consultation more than doubling from last year. We see such progress to naturally lead to offerings of online prescription, dietary supplements, and other related products and services over time to enable more people in China to access quality healthcare and wellness services. Baidu building blocks are also helping to form topical communities. For example, we hosted approximately 100 live broadcasting sessions conducted by experts on national cultural heritage in the second quarter, which created a community following for jade, antique jewelry, and collectibles. Various stakeholders in the community sprouted up on Baidu, such as collectible valuation specialists, merchants, using live broadcasting, e-commerce, and other feature sets to enable long-tail merchants to better monetize on Baidu. The versatility of Baidu's building blocks is also allowing a strong community of students and parents to form on Baidu. For example, students can watch the 400-plus live broadcasting sessions offered by over 100 universities and, educa and educational experts from our feed and smart mini programs, as well as check their entrance exam scores, research suitable universities, and learn about popular majors based on Baidu's big data. While at an early stage, we see community formation from the interplay of Baidu building blocks as a way to further enrich Baidu's position as a leading knowledge and information-centric internet platform. Empowering content and service providers to monetize on Baidu will ensure a robust and growing content and services ecosystem, paving the way for additional monetization opportunities in the future. Moving to Duo OS, Xiaodu series of smart display and smart speakers was the best-selling in speaker category on JD.com during June 18 Shopping Festival. Xiaodu series of smart devices is building a strong brand in a marketplace. Well, <clears throat> with Baidu's leading AI capabilities such as voice search and multi-input modality. Dual OS Skill Store now offers over 4,000 skills. In wide breadth of content, including children learning online games, videos. Turning to Baidu Cloud and AI services, we are at an early stage of intelligent transformation, empowering traditional industries through the use of AI and their operational data to increase productivity and improve their service offerings. Businesses are coming to the realization that they have to innovate through AI or be left behind. While many cloud enterprises are chasing after scale in areas such as CDN and S, Baidu Cloud is positioned as a one-stop shop for our customers' cloud needs. And more importantly, differentiating through intelligent solutions by leveraging Baidu's leading AI, paving the way for long-term growth. For example, Baidu formed a strategic partnership with China National Building Materials Group, the parent of 13 listed companies, with the aim to leverage Baidu AI paths, equipped with big data and IoT edge computing capabilities, 
to provide intelligent logistics, intelligent factory, and industrial autonomous driving. CNBM Group plans to use Baidu AI Pass, paired with Baidu Intelligent Map, to improve the routing efficiency of its logistics vehicles and track vehicles' whereabouts to improve operational efficiency and reduce production costs. Baidu's AI open platform is built on Baidu Cloud, offering over 260 AI capabilities, which is tapped at peak a trillion times a day by over 2.1 million developers. This gives Baidu incredible insight on how AI is best used. And the, <clears throat> at the World Artificial Intelligence Conference recently, Baidu Ernie, our natural language processing framework, earned highest honorary recognition, the SAIL Award. IDC recently <clears throat> published a report ranking Baidu Cloud number one in China's AI public cloud market in 2019 based on revenue, AI cloud product portfolio, APIs used by developers. Turning to Apollo, we are making str strides in autonomous driving, smart transportation, as well as connected vehicles. China's new infrastructure initiative is promoting municipalities to adopt smart transportation, and Apollo stands to benefit by providing local governments with V2X infrastructure, which supports add-on features, including smart signaling, smart parking, and smart buses. To date, we have seen multiple 100 million plus RMB contracts, which reflect how municipal governments are intelligently using technology to improve the living standards of citizens in their community. Dual OS for auto is also a promising market with electrical vehicles becoming, <coughs> over, um, becoming ever more popular. Apollo robot taxi operations in Beijing, Changsha, and Tangzhou are expanding into larger networks and more complex road conditions, such as downtown streets. In working with Apollo customers, we are gaining valuable experience in the operation of autonomous driving, leading us to believe that the arrival of 5G will bring new opportunities for Apollo. For example, enabling the monitoring of driverless fleets from remote, which will increase the efficiency of auto operation to one person per multiple vehicles. In Q2, we completed the 145,000 square feet Apollo Park in Beijing, probably the world's largest autonomous driving and V2X test facilities, which supports associated functions, including testing, operational command center, big data cloud control, vehicle warehousing, maintenance, and collaboration. With that, let me turn the call over to Herman to go through the financial highlights. Thanks, Robin. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Baidu's second quarter 2020 call. All monetary amounts used in my discussion are in Renminbi unless stated otherwise. Baidu's total revenues reached 26 billion or 3.7 billion US dollars, decreasing 1% year over year which is an imp improvement from last quarter's 7% decline. Our business improvement mainly came from Baidu Core, whose revenue reached $18.9 billion, or $2.7 billion, in the second quarter, decreasing 3% year-over-year, which is a significant improvement from the 13% decline last quarter. Travel, financial services, franchising, healthcare, and auto underperform in the second quarter, though we are seeing a meaningful recovery in healthcare and franchising, along with real estate and machinery. In-app revenue grew double digits year-over-year -year in the second quarter and made up more than half of our search and fee revenues. The robustness 
of in-app revenue and its increasing revenue proportion will be an important revenue driver of Our new AI businesses also saw strong growth, up double digits year over year, with strength coming from Baidu Cloud and Smart Transportation. Cloud revenue reached 2 billion RMB in the second quarter, and we expect cloud and smart transportation to be important revenue drivers for us going forward. IHG revenue reached 7.8 billion, up 4% year over year. IHG subscribers reached 104.9 million, and its membership was up 19% year over year. IHG's ad business was down 28% year over year, impacted by the challenging macro environment and the delayed releases of top hits. Non-GAAP cost of revenues was $12.9 billion, down 19% year-over-year, primarily due to a decrease in traffic acquisition costs, sales tax and surcharges, and cost of goods sold. Traffic acquisition costs decreased primarily due to a double-digit decline in TAC revenue. Our strategy on TAC continues to be optimizing profit rather than growing TAC revenue at a loss. Non-GAAP SG&A expenses were $3.9 billion, down 18% year-over-year, year, primarily due to less channel spending promoting marketing, and to a lesser extent, a decrease in personnel-related expenses. Non-GAAP R&D expenses were $3.7 billion, down 2% year-over-year. Year. Non-GAAP operating income for Baidu was $5.6 billion, up 187% year over year. Non GAAP operating income for Baidu Core was $6.5 billion, or $917 million US dollars, up 1886% year over year. Non GAAP operating margin for Baidu Core was 34%, up 16 points from last year. Adjusted EBITDA was $7.0 billion, or $7 billion up 109% year-over-year, year, and adjusted EBITDA for Baidu Core was $7.8 billion, or $1.1 billion U.S. dollars, up 63% year-over-year, year. and adjusted EBITDA margin for Baidu Core was 41%, up 17 points from last year. As of June 30th, 2020, cash and short-term investments were $154.1 billion, and cash and short-term investments for Baidu Core were $144.6 billion, or $20.5 billion U.S. dollars. Free cash flow was $7.3 billion, and free cash flow for Baidu Core was $8.8 billion, or $1.2 billion U.S. dollars. Baidu Core had approximately 29,300 full-time equivalents as of June, down 2% from last year. During the second quarter, we returned 540 million U.S. dollars to shareholders under the 2020 stock repurchase program. And cumulatively, over the last two years, we purchased approximately 1.9 billion U.S. dollars. Our board recently approved a change to our 2020 share repurchase plan, increasing the buyback of 1 billion U.S. dollars to 3 billion U.S. dollars which is effective through the end of 2020. Turning to third quarter guidance, we expect total revenue to be between $26.3 billion and $28.7 billion, representing a growth rate of negative 6% to 2% year over year. Our guidance assumes by the core, by the core will grow between negative 7% and positive 3% year over year. These forecasts are our current and preliminary view, which is subject to substantial uncertainty. Before I turn the call to the operator, let me summarize our second quarter achievements. Our strategy to strengthen Baidu's mobile ecosystem through our building blocks and marketing cloud platform is bearing fruit. More than two-thirds of Baidu app users are logging in daily in-app search queries continue to grow above 20% year-over-year, and CPM in in-app search continues to widen against traditional browser search. Content and services are expanding at an incredible rate on Baidu. 
Baijia Hao Content Network now holds 3.4 million publisher accounts, up 52% year over year, and the number of smart mini programs joining Baidu Network grew over five folds from last year. The increase in services, along with improved social, video, and monetization feature sets, live streaming, shopping, is making Baidu platform more lively and interactive and more conducive to doing business for long-tail SMEs. Verticals and communities are forming, which further enhances closed-loop transactions and down-the-marketing funnel opportunities in the future. In-app revenue is growing double digits, making up a majority of search and fee revenues. In-app revenue, together with new AI businesses, will be, res be res respectable growth engines for Baidu in the years to come. Our strong execution is also reflected by our results of increasing non-GAAP operating margin for Baidu Core by 7, 16 points year over year and adjusted EBITDA margin Baidu Core by 17 points. Such strong operating results from Baidu Core is an indication of Baidu's prudent approach to investments and growing quality revenues. Over time, we believe the true measure of value creation is the ability to increase cash flow for our shareholders. Operator, with that, let's now open the call to questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you wish to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. If you wish to cancel your request, please press the pound or hash key. Participants are requested to restrict one question at each time. First question comes from the line of Piyush from Goldman. Please go ahead. Thank you, Robin Herman, for uh, taking my question. Um, I really have one question centered around how your business has been recovering into the third quarter. You mentioned, Herman, that medical has started to come into its own, which is very encouraging. Could you give us a sense of what percentage or some scale of how, back, how much it's come back and how much further we can expend it to, expect it to come back in the coming quarters uh, based on the guidance you set for 3Q? And related to the guidance and the medical, is you talked about some of the other verticals where you're in the earlier stage of recovery. Can you give us a feel for how long that might take to come back? And essentially, uh, give us a feel for how the, for the broader economy has been performing. And um, I know you said one question only, but there is a pronounced improvement in your gross margin in 2Q um, over the first quarter and versus the past. It's, is that and the gains you're seeing at the operating profit level sustainable? Thank you. Hi, Peach. Wow, that's a mouthful of uh, questions here. Uh, let me see what I can do. Uh, with regards to uh, healthcare, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, when, when you look at it on a year-over-year -year basis, uh, we're still uh, down uh, significantly uh, double digits. But when you look at uh, how we're recovering on a, a sequential basis, uh, we, we've come back uh, pretty uh, significantly. And uh, we expect uh, at this current rate, uh, healthcare uh, should uh, probably um, be as good as uh, last year, uh, probably uh, sometime in, in Q3, uh, given the current uh, trajectory. Uh, we're also seeing um, several other uh, verticals uh, uh, at the same uh, trend. And, and that's why when you look at uh, our, our guidance in, in, in uh, Q3, uh, you know, you're seeing us, you know, doing better on a year-over-year -year basis than Q2, and Q2 is uh, assuming we hit the midpoint, and then Q2, you know, is much better than Q1. So I think on a whole, the, the, the trend is right, and as I mentioned in the prepare remarks, you know, given that it's COVID-19 pandemic, you know, we have seen, you know, a second wave coming back to Beijing. So the, I, the assumption here is that we continue to have smooth sailing, and, and that we, we don't have uh, further ways to disrupt the economy because part of our business you know, relies on the fact that stores need to be open so they'll come to Baidu to buy uh, traffic uh, uh, to their stores. Uh, with regards to um, you know, our, our gross margin and, and our uh, operating margin, I, I think that uh, you, you can probably expect uh, you know, the, the savings that, that we had uh, in, in the last few quarters. You know, as we talked about this uh, uh, last year in, in May, we promised you that we would uh, go through our operations 
and actually go through and look at where should we put our investment and place our investment that would have you know higher ROIs. Uh, we, we follow through six months after that, and you saw starting from Q4 last year that we had a pretty lean uh, P&L. And we, we've been uh, going through with this uh, strategy in Q1 and again in Q2, so you should expect us to continue into Q3 and, and Q4. I, I would say that uh, part of uh, Q2 uh, cost structure, though, is, is the fact that, you know, uh, several things to look at, you know, for example, sales and marketing, that's a function of whether we can actually spend, right? If our revenue is coming in hard, it probably would be hard for us to spend on, on marketing, whether, you know, it's promotions or whether it's, you know, trying to buy uh, more app installation because less smartphones are being sold. So in, in, as the economy gets back, uh, there's more, uh, you know, app installation that we could buy with, with high, high uh, you know, good ROIs we're going to continue to buy. Um, and then uh, similarly, uh, you know, going into uh, Q3, Q4, it was hard to uh, do interviews, especially when, when people can uh, come into the office. But as China opens up, we're going to be able to do that, and we're going to be able to uh, uh, hire and go according to our budget. So I, I would uh, say that, that from going from Q2 to Q3, you should expect our uh, uh, cost of sales and operating expenses on a non-GAAP basis for Baidu Core to increase probably uh, 10 to uh, you know, in the teens, I, I would say that's probably a, a good good way to uh, gauge this. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for the questions. Next question comes from the line of Eddie Liu of Bank of America. Please go ahead. Um, good morning, guys. Uh, just uh, two questions. Uh, number one, uh, could you comment on your thought uh, about uh, the potential uh, combination uh, of uh, Tencent and uh, one of your uh, competitors? Uh, would that change the competitive landscape and how Baidu can address uh, the uh, potential changes? And then uh, number two, uh, probably more a housekeeping question. Um, you may, uh, mentioned that uh, the uh, COVID situation in Beijing affected the uh, second quarter uh, core pieces. Uh, so just wondering, could you help us to kind of like your get a sense of the uh, potential impact and how much exposure of the uh, core pieces uh, to the advertisers in uh, Beijing, uh, for example? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, uh, Eddie. Uh, I'll uh, take the first one. Um, so it is actually not new uh, between uh, Sogo and Tencent. Right? So they have been working together for a long while. Um, I think um, um, it is not new um, in terms of the uh, uh, collaboration. So actually, uh, in the mobile you know, uh, um, era, so uh, users usually remember each app by its key feature. And you know, Baidu app clearly has established the uh, brand as the number one uh, general search engine. So I'm, I think you know, such brand awareness is very hard to uh, duplicate. And what's more, you know, for Baidu, uh, we have moved to the Baidu app uh, strategy to build our uh, ecosystem within the app. So with that, actually, we um, already improved the user experience, you know, far from the traditional general search engine. It is not just for users to get information, but also help the users to, you know, experience the close-to-loop um, experience, you know, to uh, uh, complete the tasks in their mind, you know, not only for service, but also even for shop online. So the more we build our you know, ecosystem and the more uh, good features we can present to the users. So, you know, with that, I think, you know, Baidu will keep leading the innovation in the search market and um, um, keep doing well. Let me uh, add to uh, what Do just uh, said. Um, Eddie, so it's important to understand the different uh, product positioning, right? When you have, uh, for example, uh, WeChat, it's a social network. So the purpose of social network is to get people together, right? You try to connect people with peop uh, other people that are known. The purpose of search is not trying to connect people to people. It's trying to connect people to a certain content, whether it's text, whether it's a photo, whether it's a video. So when you go, for example, uh, into a social network, you know, you have their news feed, and, and what you want to do is it, it, it's uh, usually trying to um, uh, 
uh, uh, very short, and, and, and you want to just kind of get get a very uh, quick update, and you want to go through a lot of very feeds. Whereas when you're going into search, sometimes you're interested in a topic, as we mentioned in, in uh, prepare remarks by Robin. You have people listening to live broadcasting uh, for for maybe an hour on a certain topic. Uh, you you want just very rich content. Usually, it's from uh, you know whether it's uh, social accounts, whether it's uh, from certain apps, and, and we have a managed page, whether it's some websites. So the more information you have on that specific content, the more deeper you could dive in. That uh, person who's doing the search uh, would feel you know more comfortable that that they have well uh, informed information. So when you start building a lot of search functions in a social app, you might be then good at search, but you will lose that social function. So it's a question of whether Tencent wants to make their social product more search-oriented and search-centric and less social, because if they start doing that, then they leave the door open for someone to build a better search product. I mean, for a better someone to build a better social product. And then our exposure to uh, Beijing, uh, perhaps. Yeah, uh, the, the exposure uh, from Beijing, uh, you know, it, it's um, not very significant to our overall uh, revenue, but it, it, will, it will have uh, some because uh, some of our advertisers are uh, in, in the north part of uh, China. So, so uh, I would say, say probably, um, you know, it's in the, uh, 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 you know, Single digit, uh, rather than you know more significant than that. Thank you, Herman and Adel. Thank you for the questions. Next question comes from the line of Alicia Yap of City. Please go ahead. Uh, so, uh, and Joanne, thanks for taking my questions. Uh, my question is related to uh, the revenue from the managed page, which this quarter um, increased to 30% right of the core marketing revenue. Is there a time frame um, that you anticipate all the ad revenues to be fully migrate uh, to the 100% managed page? Is this uh, feasible? Um, so out of the um, merchants that previously on H5 websites, um, what, are you, what is the percentage of the merchants that already switch over to the managed page versus those uh, yet to shift over? Um, and then just quickly follow up, uh, can you describe the advertiser sentiment? Um, do you feel that um, the attitude of the spending has uh, dramatically changed or affected in the last two months in light of um, another layer of the U.S. and China tension? Thank you. Uh, I will start with the first part. Um, so that actually uh, in uh, Robin's uh, um, opening remarks, um, he already mentioned about the percentage of the um, Ending on the uh, managed pages. So uh, uh, some of the in the beginning for the managed pages. Right. So our um, intention is to make the experience for the users uh, safer and you know to get more um, uh, true information. So but later on, we are seeing more and more advertisers actually they start to use the managed page by themselves without our um, enforcement. So. Um, this is because we are adding more and more features to the managed pages so they can significantly improve their ROI. So uh, in terms of the number of advertisers um, uh, adopting uh, uh, managed pages, and it is even higher numbers because managed pages now can help the SMEs to easily to do business on our um, uh, system on our uh, 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 products. So that's why we are seeing more and more uh, advertisers, they are adopting managed pages by themselves. And I bet, you know, I think you know, with more features and uh, more advertisers realizing the um, um, advantage of the managed pages, so they are going to, you know, the rate for uh, adoption will be even uh, higher or faster. Yeah. And let me add to that, Alicia. Um, your, your question was, you know, it, do we have a set target for a managed page? Uh, we don't have a set target. I think, uh, as we mentioned many times, uh, you know, using our building blocks, the idea is that 
if we can get content on by this platform, uh, you know, we'll have better uh, user insight. We can provide better user experience, right? So the idea is not to uh, have 100% of our revenue from managed page, but to have it from managed page, to have it from smart mini programs, because that's content and services from other apps, to have it from uh, by Jiahao, so that we can promote uh, creators and, and publishers and so forth. Uh, so obviously, the more of that, the better. But because we are a search engine, we're, we're an open uh, app, we want to also be able to search content that's not on our platform so you have the, the World Wide Web. So I think that the goal is trying to have as much of the World Wide Web on our platform so that we can improve user experience, not just on managed page. And, and we're, we're seeing a lot of content coming over uh, to Baidu platform uh, since we've been focusing on this uh, strengthening our mobile ecosystem. With regards to uh, advertiser uh, sentiment uh, on geopolitical uh, tension, um, we, we think that uh, currently our advertisers' uh, uh, sentiment is more a function of the economy in China. It's more of a function of uh, the kind of policies we have uh, allowing people to actually go to storage, the, the shops, you know, uh, outside and so forth. So as China opens up more, as people are more freely to run about, I think our business would, would, would come back. Uh, I don't think right now it, um, geopolitical tension has a meaningful impact uh, on our business uh, so far. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Herman. Thank you, Dong. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Next question comes from the line of James Lee of Mizuho. Please go ahead. Great. Uh, thanks for taking my questions. Uh, Herman, I was wondering may maybe you can comment on uh, the Baidu app, DAU decline uh, sequentially. Is it more to do to suspension uh, of, of your uh, app, or is it more people returning back to work here? And, and just curious, are you taking any initiatives to drive DAU growth in the second half, or do you feel you have the critical mass uh, at this point in time? And also secondly, uh, regarding to SEC inquiry on IGE, and its independence review. And just curious, how involved is the Baidu management in this process? And especially on the internal review side, such as selecting the advisor here uh, to make sure it's a credible and impartial process for this important matter. Thanks. Okay. Um, so, uh, James, let me answer the first question. I'll answer in part, and then I'll, uh, you know, turn over to Doe to answer the second part, which is how do we uh, improve uh, our, our DAU growth and so forth. So uh, a as you know, um, China was hit uh, hard with COVID-19 in uh, first quarter. Uh, I think the, the, uh, we, we came to uh, you know, uh, probably the trough of, of our uh, economy and, and you know, people were, were very stringent with uh, you know, social distancing in February. And even uh, going into March, uh, people uh, were, were, were social distancing, and, and you could see that throughout China. So a lot of stores did not uh, open up and so forth. So a lot of people were staying home. You didn't have schools open. So when you compare that, uh, you know, our, our DA user is reported in the third month of each quarter. So when you compare March to June, uh, obviously in, in June, uh, you, you see a lot of uh, places in China uh, opening up, a lot of stores opening up. Uh, you see some of the schools you know, uh, uh, opening up. So I think the, the big differentiation between uh, March and, and June is the fact that uh, people were running about outside of their house. And as a result, they have uh, probably less time spent uh, on their apps. So when you look at, um, you know, uh, basically the top apps in China, you know, Quest Mobile is, is a good example. You can see that it's not just Baidu app. It's a pretty... Uh, consistent trend with all the top apps that, that uh, March was very high and going into June, uh, you're just going to have uh, less traffic. I think with the companies that just reported uh, over the last few days, you're seeing the same trend. With that, let me uh, turn it over to Doe and talk about you know, how what we're doing trying to in, uh, improve DAU growth. Okay. Um, so we do have a, a, a many um, Approaches to uh, work on to you know, solve this uh, issue, right? So, um, um, as we said, you know, we are uh, adding more and more uh, content and services to the app, right? So that we can increase the engagement between the users and our product. 
So uh, this will help us, you know, to uh, get users being um, more longer, you know, longer and more frequent on this app. And also, um, uh, so we are adding uh, more uh, uh, features, uh, not only content, the service, but also more uh, new features to this uh, product for a different group of users. Say, so, um, now we are uh, developing some uh, specific products for the colleges. You know, when they come back to uh, uh, universities, campus, you know, they are going to um, have a chance to use our new uh, product. So um, with that, you know, I think um, we already see the trend uh, coming back, but um, for now it's uh, because it's in the summer break. So um, uh, we are going to uh, see, uh, you know, how our uh, solutions are working or not in the, in the near future. Um, yeah, and let me uh, comment on the uh, IT uh, SEC investigation. Um, at Baidu, we, we have a zero tolerance uh, for fraud. Uh, when there is a short seller report issue against uh, our subsidiary, especially one that's quite autonomous, it is important to get an independent opinion. The audit committee of IT stepped in and they summoned the internal audit as well as hire an independent external advisor. This process is part of good corporate governance and we think this validation process is important to earn investors' trust. Since I am part of the parent company, I am not directly involved in the independent investigation, and thus I am not in a position to comment on IHE's situation specifically. Perhaps I can talk about my understanding of how the process usually works. In addition to looking at short seller report, it is customary for independent external advisors to also perform forensic procedures on the rest of the financial numbers, which means the process will take time. The fact that the SEC is involved, they may ask the independent external advisor questions, and the independent external advisor may end up doing additional procedures. With COVID-19 in the backdrop, one should expect this process to be longer than normal. In past cases, without a pandemic, we have seen investigations lasting months and sometimes beyond a year. The positive side is that we have a very qualified independent external advisor looking into this situation. Typically, if evidence comes to light that there is reasonable doubt to believe a company is fraudulent and that their numbers are not reliable, then the company's auditor will pull their audit opinion and withdraw from the engagement. Again, having an independent set of eyes reviewing the situation is meant to put the allegations to rest. At Baidu, we, take, we will take action to ensure good corporate governance if necessary and operate with our interests in mind. Only this way will we be able to tap the capital markets in the future. I hope this answers uh, your question. Thank you for the questions. Next question comes from the line of Tian Ho of TH Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, TH Capital, your line is now open. Please ask your question. I'm sorry, I have to move on to the next questions from Gregory Li Chao from Barclays. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, management. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first one is about your non-marketing uh, or non-advertising services. So as I mentioned in the press release, uh, your AI, your cloud-related business, as well as the smart uh, transportation, uh, become important revenue uh, driver in the quarter. Uh, so in the future, so let's say a five-year or three-year uh, horizon, do you think this uh, a non-advertising business a revenue can be kind of possible to exceed your current advertising revenue someday? Uh, uh, and a quick follow-up for your share repurchasing. Uh, so the amount was re uh, raised uh, from $1 billion to $3 billion. Uh, I know you have a very rich onshore uh, cash position in RMB, and you also recently finished the $1 billion debt offering. Uh, so do you have a plan to convert as RMB more RMB into U.S. dollar for the buyback or issuing more debt or other measures uh, to raise money for the buyback? Thank you. Hi, Greg. Thanks for your questions. 
Uh, with regards to uh, how significant our uh, non-AI businesses or non-ad business can be, uh, I think what it will do is uh, it will become an important growth uh, driver for us. Uh, it, as you can see, our, our uh, Baidu Core's uh, non-advertising uh, piece uh, is it, getting bigger and bigger. It's pretty uh, in, uh, significant now. And because of uh, the, the size that, that we think uh, that there's a potential to be really helping drive the overall growth of uh, our business. And, and we talked about in my prepared remarks that just the cloud business alone, we're talking about uh, 2 billion RMB uh, this quarter. Obviously, when you add on uh, the other uh, businesses, such as uh, you know the Xiaodu uh, speakers, you're, you're talking about smart transportation and so forth, uh, the size is, is bigger than that. Uh, with regards to our share uh, purchase uh, program, where we expand from 1 billion to 3 billion US dollars, uh, we have several ways of uh, getting U.S. dollars. Obviously, we, we just uh, raised a bond earlier this year, a billion dollar U.S. Uh, we, we also uh, can do uh, several things, as you mentioned. One is to convert uh, renminbi into uh, USD, uh, and, and obviously we'll, we'll take advantage of that when, when that opportunity uh, arrives. The second thing we can also do is sell down our investments, and we've been steadily uh, doing that. Uh, you know, we, we look at the, the current, um, you know, market prices and so forth, and then we look at our cash needs, uh, U.S. dollar cash needs, and we'll sell our uh, investment down uh, as appropriate if we feel like uh, we, there's no strategic need for a previous investment. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. I'll move on to the next questions once again from uh, Tian Ho of TH Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, uh, Herman, Jan, Shindo, and Robin. Uh, so my question is related to your investment. Uh, so uh, if I look at your business, you know, we can literally separate them uh, as one part is the consumer facing. Let's, you, uh, let's say you are three uh, building blocks, and the other part is uh, Business facing, that's your uh, cloud AI Apollo. Uh, so I can imagine uh, each of those uh, uh, area you can do a great deal. So what's the plan? What's your investment plan uh, in the second half or next year? And if you have to rank them, what is your priority list? Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Robin. Let me uh, try to answer your question. Uh, I think uh, mm -hmm. our, our consumer-facing business and uh, uh, business-facing businesses are uh, all, all great businesses. Uh, they each uh, have the, their own potential. Um, the consumer-facing ones, uh, uh, during the prepared remark, as well as the <clears throat> answers from Dow and uh, Herman, uh, you, you can see that there are still a lot of things we can do. Uh, especially using uh, technology to provide or to, to provide better uh, uh, content and services uh, to to our uh, users uh, and uh, uh, provide better conversion for our advertisers. Uh, but uh, uh, for the uh, business facing uh, opportunities, uh, uh, th th this sector will uh, grow apparently faster. Uh, than the consumer facing ones, and we will uh, continue to uh, aggressively in invest in areas we, we picked, and uh, uh, th these areas will uh, grow uh, year after year for uh, many years, and uh, we are leading uh, in almost all the, the categories we decide to, to get in for the business facing uh, opportunities. Yeah, and, and let me just add to that, Ken. You talk about priorities. I think it, it's been uh, pretty clear. We've been very consistent with our priorities. When you look at our 2C business, is uh, in-app services, right? And then outside of our for uh, AI businesses, uh, you know, we talk about the three businesses uh, that that we have, uh, and particularly cloud. It's at a, a bigger scale, and, and it's a huge market. And we do have our advantage of uh, having a, a leading, you know, AI capability. So. So uh, we, the AI businesses, in addition to uh, in-app services, are our top priorities. And I think among the AI businesses, I think they're all good. They're all growing, uh, you know, uh, nicely. And then, and then uh, I, I think uh, cloud is a bigger scale, and that's 
probably something that we'll put uh, more emphasis on. Thank you. In the interest of time, we have time for one question. The last question comes from Bini Wong of HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, management. Thank you for the time here. Um, so uh, congrats on the earnings speed with a meaningful margin improvement. Um, my question here is on the Smart Mini program, right? Looking at our competitive strategy that is Mini program and social network uh, actually work nicely together to sustain the relationship with the users and advertiser can actually feel it's their private domain. So um, how would that define, uh, would change the advertising industry landscape and then also our positioning in the Smart Mini program? And then a quick follow-up here is that uh, I recall, um, Robin, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that video is <clears throat> accounting for 70% of the seats. So I wonder if you can discuss more about the pricing. Uh, because again, your competitor mentioning that uh, the shift from Bennett S towards fees has seen uh, like a meaningful improvement in the pricing. So a uh, meaningful increase in the pricing, I meant. So do you think this is also going to be one of our driver into the second half to see a faster revenue growth from here? Thank you. Okay, for the uh, smart um, mini program, uh, so um, um, as Robin already mentioned, right? So we see the uh, increase um, in terms of the um, uh, MAU monthly active user. Actually, uh, if we if we talk about the time spent on the smart mini programs, so the growth is even um, much higher. So it means that okay, uh, smart mini programs is um, you know leading to um, you know, heavy engagement between the users and the providers. So we already see, you know, the numbers of uh, transactions through the mini programs, and also the uh, budget dollars, you know, um, um, using a smart mini program as the landing page for their um, campaigns, and um, also, you know, the uh, um, amount of the um, uh, transactions. Um, uh, I mean, in terms of the GMVs, it's also growing. So um, we see pretty good trend for the smart uh, mini programs in our uh, ecosystem. And um, all this um, happens because it is, uh, you know, providing, you know, better user experience to users. And it's a good way to connect with users and its service providers. So um, uh, later on, you know, we are going to uh, share more information you know, and data about the, um, you know, smart mini, mini programs. Um, and then uh, with that, I would, I would uh, turn to uh, Robin for a question. Yeah, uh, on the uh, video uh, uh, content for advertisers, it's also very effective for uh, our advertisers as well as the uh, uh, users. Uh, video app. Uh, and the, it, it, it uh, improves the conversion for many of our advertisers. Uh, therefore, uh, as you know, most of our advertisers who are at budget uh, performance oriented. So the, the pricing for um, for uh, ad creative uh, creative sort of um, uh, video content is generally higher than the average. Is that what you're asking? Thank you, Benny, for the reply. Um, Bini, do you have anything to add? Oh, yes. I was just asking is that in terms of the uh, pricing, because we are seeing more video advertising. So uh, thank you for the color on the conversion. But what about on the pricing side? Do you think we can also charge higher pricing with the video ads uh, on the eCPM side from like traditional, um, uh, like say, banner ads, and then that should help us to be another, like the growth driver into second half? Yeah, the simple answer is yes, because uh, the, the advertisers are mostly performance driven. Uh, when we uh, can improve the conversion uh, through video or through other means, the, the pricing will follow. Thank you very much, management, for the answers. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude our conference for today. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>